Good afternoon, good evening, Dr. Barry, Lund of News. It's interesting, uh, Channel 10 here in Melbourne, Australia, they put a video up about the flooding in the desert in, in Dubai. Interesting to see the desert flooded. It was fascinating. It reminds me a few weeks ago or a month ago or so, I was, a, I was about 20 kilometers away from where I am now, and it was dark clouds on, this, on, a, on, a, on a mountain, and within an hour or two, it was raining, thunder and lightning. And it was really strange because back at the 20 kilometers where I came from, my wife was watering the garden. So there's something magically going on. It must be climate change, guys, as you can see in the background. Something is happening and, and we've got to be very, very wary of climate change and, and, and what we say and exactly what we think. But have a look at this, this video. I'll put that little clip up later on. But have a look at the one from Channel 10. It kind of explains everything the other channels did not add the missing link if you like so anyway thanks for watching london news keep keep up the support keep spreading the stuff especially on evictions if anybody's getting evicted here in victoria for god's sake contact the common law court the address is up here all over the place support us and we will help you anyway this is london news sign off keep up the good work and share the stuff that's of interest to everybody because we're in a very, very strange world and unless we stand up and unite under common law together. It's, remember, it's people power to the sheriff's office. That's the only way. All this stuff complaining, whinging is a one-way street. We need, we need the answers, not the complaints. Stop whinging. Bye for now. A fierce storm has lashed the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain, causing widespread flooding, with flights to the world's second busiest international airport diverted. While the death toll in neighbouring Oman from separate flooding continues to rise. In the desert, where rain is a rarity. It's real. I've never seen this much lightning in my life before. This is crazy. The menacing storm plunging the sky into darkness, only lit up by the next lightning strike. That is not a time lapse. That's just how much lightning is happening. Roads turn to rivers, forcing drivers to abandon their vehicles. One opting to travel by a vessel. Aircraft looking more like boats on the flooded runways, with flights disrupted at Dubai International Airport, the world's second busiest terminal. Passengers left stranded. Businesses and homes also not spared by the torrents of water. The deluge of whipping rain, two years worth with almost 160 millimetres by nightfall. Authorities closed schools and warned people to stay home, with further storms expected to linger into Wednesday local time. The death toll in separate heavy flooding in neighbouring Oman, rising to 18 with others still missing. Bahrain also pummeled. The UAE's National Centre of Meteorology confirming two planes conducted cloud seeding operations in the day preceding. Climate change also a potential cause, with the event occurring the same day as the 2023 State of Climate Action report was released, highlighting concerns global climate action is not moving fast enough. Kate Cardwell for 10 News First. Uh, the first is the control module that you see behind me. Then we have our actual cloud seeding flares. The cameras for security, it also helps us observe weather conditions in real time and make sure that all of the equipment is operating correctly during a storm. Inside these canisters uh, are the flares with the seeding agents. The canisters are used as, as spark arresters, so they prevent sparks from reaching the ground. So if we pull off the spark arrestor, you can see the flare inside. The ignition of the flares are controlled from the control module that's behind us. So the white triangle there is a self-service modem, and then the solar panel keeps us powered. Inside we have a battery and then a control board. So the control board interacts with the software. We're linked or synced with the software in Utah currently and that allows us to fire or ignite any of the flares from that remote location. Because of the lack of clouds and proper wind conditions, today is not a good day for cloud seeding at all. But Garrett and his team are going to light a flare for us anyway so we can show you how it works. There's just one small problem. The battery in the control module died shortly before we arrived. 
but it's nothing a little jump start can't fix. After a little juice from Garrett's truck, it's time to set off the flare. The primary seating agent in this is silver iodide. Silver iodide is a simple compound. It's polar in nature like water. So there's chemical properties that help attract water molecules to silver iodide. It's also structured molecularly similar to ice. So it helps generate or helps spawn the generation of ice buildup. And then that becomes a hellstone or a snowflake that falls here primarily as rain. So one flare like this has billions and billions of potential sites for that water to congregate around. We'll launch them in sequences. We watch the radar to see when bands of the highest concentration of liquid water are passing above us in the clouds. And we try to target those high concentration pockets in the storm systems. Uh, we'll launch between three and 20 flares for a typical storm. Once the flare is lit, it takes a little bit of time to carry up into the clouds. And once it's up at, at the proper elevation, it'll take about 20 minutes to instigate the rain or the snow process. Uh, so overall, you're probably looking at about 40 to 45 minutes before you're seeing the maximum result. And that's why we're stationed miles away from our target area. So we have very specific targets that, that drain directly into major water basins. And we time these events to correlate with rain above those intended targets. One of the biggest questions or most common questions that we receive uh, relates to the safety of silver iodide. Silver is biologically inert, so it will not interact in a negative fashion with plant or animal life. Iodine is actually a critical building block of a number of hormones in animals, so it is safe as well. In fact, if you look at table salt or baby formula, you'll see iodine in its molecular form as an additive in those commonly consumed substances. But what about other potential adverse effects? Could cloud seeding affect communities outside the targeted areas? Sometimes there is a concern about robbing Peter to pay Paul. So are we benefiting California at the expense of Nevada? And the truth is, is that storm systems, when they move over off the coastline, only about 10% of that moisture is gonna fall in the form of precip. And we're looking at increasing that to about 11% because we have about a 10% increase in the natural storms productivity. So going from 10% to 11% in California has an insignificant impact on the amount of precip that will still be available in Nevada or Utah.